What's up, Janky fam? So in an earlier video, I talked about how much money you could save with a sim racing setup compared to drifting or even just regular racing in real life. I've recommended sim as a starting point to a ton of people looking to get into drift, for example, and there's always that sticker shock when looking at cost. For example, this setup, including my PC build, cost me in the ballpark of three to four grand. And the knee-jerk reaction is to think to yourself, well, I'd rather put that money into an actual car. And as car enthusiasts, we're great at convincing ourselves, as well as our significant others when necessary, that it makes sense to spend astronomical amounts of money on a car. But we're not so great accounting for the unanticipated cost. Yeah, those buckets are one to two grand for the pair, but then you also need brackets and harnesses and maybe even a harness bar for said harnesses. The list goes on. Unanticipated costs are also a huge factor when looking at doing motorsport type events. This particular video is going to cover my cost over my first year of drifting, which is especially expensive given the gold of roast tires. But even with the track day, for example, beyond the cost of the event, you're going to wreck a set of tires, burn through brake pads, fluids are going to need to be flushed, never mind wear and tear on the car. If you pop an engine or crash the car, and it happens, that's potentially anywhere from a couple of grand to 10 plus. So in my continued effort to convince people that sim racing makes a ton of sense to get seat time and build skills that 100% transfer over to real life, I'm gonna compare the cost of my sim racing setup versus the cost of my first year of drifting. Let's start with my sim setup. And I'll acknowledge that it wasn't top of the line and that it has changed from last year. But first, I built a PC that was capable of running VR because I wanted the most immersive experience. You can 100% use console or a cheaper setup, but my particular setup cost around $2,600, and that includes the PC itself, a VR headset, and peripherals including monitor, keyboard, and so on. Second, my actual sim racing hardware was around 770 total, which included the wheelbase, pedals, handbrake, shifter, and an upgraded steering wheel. And again, these costs can vary pretty significantly depending on how serious a setup you want to build and even where you live in the world. Next, I needed a stand to hold all the sim gear and that came to around $380. So the total for my sim racing setup was in the ballpark of $3,750. Onto the car. Now I bought a car specifically for drifting, but for the main comparison on this video and to keep things more fair, we'll pretend that I already owned it and that it was magic pre-modified and that none of that cost anything and you know how magical that would be anyway we'll start by looking at my event fees and in total I did 13 events last year that I can account for though I'm pretty sure there are a few missing that I paid for in cash that total came to $1,360 just to get on track at some drift events if you're looking at track days to race your car that can average anywhere from hundred bucks to 600 per event depending on your region and what tracks are around you then last season I went through seven sets of tires which cost an average of $88 per tire that added up to $2,475 and again this can vary pretty significantly depending on what you're driving, what kind of tires you're buying, and so on. Then on the grip side, you're theoretically getting multiple events out of a set of tires versus say one event for a set of tires with drift. Next, I forget how I came to this number, but I spent around $420 in gas between transportation to and from events as well as running the car on track. In terms of maintenance, which includes some of those unanticipated costs I mentioned earlier, I spent $1,100 on various things that needed to be done to the car, including oil changes, tire mounting related fees, as well as replacing my rear wheel bearings and axles that went bad during the season. That said, my total, without any cost associated with buying and modifying the car, came out to $5,000. $355. Now you look at those numbers at 5k for real life and 4k for sim and maybe the immediate thought is that sim doesn't save you that much money and that my friends is where you're wrong. Because from here we're going to dig into seat time. At these events most tracks are smaller setups where it takes maybe one to two minutes to complete a run. In between that you have sessions, you have to wait for other drivers, maybe you're letting the car cool down or swapping tires. But I would say at a four hour event I was getting around 30 minutes of actual driving time on track. And this is specifically referring to the time in which I am behind the wheel aggressively attacking corners. You multiply 30 minutes by 13 events and I got around six and a half hours of actual true driving time over those events. On the sim side, I generally average two to three hours per week, sometimes more, sometimes less, but let's say an average of two hours per week at 52 weeks in a year, which is 104 hours. And now we're going to move into the division portion of this janky drift math lesson. The cost of my sim setup at $3,750 divided by my 104 hours for the year came out to $36 for every hour that I drove sim last year. My real life event cost at $5,000 1,355 divided by six and a half hours of seat time means that every hour that I spent on track cost me around $824. That's a f***ing astronomical difference. And if you've watched any of my previous videos, you can see just how much the skills I learned in sim drifting translated to real life. While I would say my time on track is a more quality and condensed learning experience, from a volume perspective, I've learned far more on the sim racing side for a significantly lower overall cost. And on top of that, a sim setup can last for years, so theoretically it would cost nothing to run that same setup in year two, three, and so on. Depending on where you live, there are also potentially off seasons, and sim has the added benefit of you still getting to learn during that time. Now that we've established that, let's add the cost of my car back in.
in. I bought my 350Z for 9K last year, and between maintenance and modification before the season, I spent about 17K, which hurts my soul to think about, but that puts my total cost for the year in real life at 22,000, $355 or $3,400 an hour last year to drift in real life compared to $36 an hour on sim. So I think me from the first video said it best, buy yourself a f***ing sim racing setup. Seriously, it's a big initial investment, I know, but it pays for itself in this scenario almost a hundred times over. You will build real life driving skills and people will say, how the f*** are you so good at your first event or when you've only run a few events? And not to sound like an Hole, but I say that from experience. If you're a car enthusiast on the fence about a sim setup, whether you're into racing or drifting, just do it. If you've raced or drifted in real life, it'll take some getting used to because without G-Force, you kind of have to relearn a bit how to perceive speed on track, but there's a reason pro racing and drifting teams use sim. It works. If you need to justify the purchase to a significant other, tell them a random ass dude on YouTube said you needed it. I will of course deny any involvement despite the fact that there's video evidence. But anyway, as always, I'm more than happy to answer any questions. Please consider liking, commenting, and subscribing because that is evidently how the YouTube gods decide how good my content is. And hopefully I'll see you next time.